I uh, explained what we mean by the luminosity of any light source, stars in particular. That's the amount of energy that the source emits per unit time. And we measure it in watts. But of course, all of that uh, energy that is produced by the light source is spreading throughout the space uniformly in all directions. Now you know that as your distance from a light source increases, it appears to be less bright. It's the same source. It produces the same amount of energy per unit time. So what is involved? Well, the brightness of a source that we see is the amount of uh, the energy it produces uh, that reaches us per unit time and unit area. Okay? So as you move away from the light source, there is less of the energy that it produces that is passing uh, per unit time, per unit area uh, as the distance increases. So this is illustrated on this diagram here. So for instance, let's take a light bulb as a, a source of light energy. Now, at a distance of one meter from it, there's a certain amount of energy that is passing through the unit area. So, in some units, the brightness would be one, right? Because the brightness is amount of um, energy passing per unit time per unit area. Now, at a distance of two meters, the same amount of energy that passed through the unit area at a distance of one meter, now at two meters, that same amount of energy is passing through four unit areas. So then the amount of energy that each unit uh, area receives is reduced by a factor of four. It's only one quarter of the energy that passed here. At a distance of three meters, the same amount of energy now is distributed over nine unit areas. So then the brightness here is one ninth of what it is at the distance of one meter. Here it's one quarter of what it is at the distance of one meter. Okay? So And we can always measure it. There are devices that are used to measure precisely the amount of energy that we receive from the light source uh, per unit time and unit area. They are all depending on the nature of the source, the nature of the instrument changes, but it's uh, done. And we denote brightness with capital B can always be measured. Okay, so what is the precise relationship between the luminosity of the source, say a star, its distance from us, and its brightness that we detect? Well, it's quite simple, really. If I have uh, a star, and I'm interested into how much energy passes per unit area of a sphere centered at a star, and the radius of the star, that is its distance from us, is d. It has luminosity l. All of this luminosity at the distance d will be distributed over the surface area of this uh, sphere of radius d. So then the brightness is the luminosity, the amount of energy per unit time, and divided by the surface area of the sphere. And the surface area of a sphere of radius d is 4 pi d squared. And this relation here that connects the brightness, the luminosity, and the distance is one of the most important relations for astronomers. We always measure distance, uh, brightness, sorry. 
And at least for nearby stars, we measure the distance using, say, parallax. And then, using this relationship, we can find out what the luminosity of the sun is. And in fact, that's how we know what the energy output of the sun is. The brightness of the sun here on Earth happens to be uh, one point, about 1.4 kilowatts per meter squared. Now, 1.4 kilowatts is the energy output of your typical electric heater that you might use to warm uh, your room uh, or what have you. And that's how much energy we get from the sun free of charge per meter squared. So it's like having energy output of a space heater per meter squared. That is a lot of energy. Okay? And that's why people, in order to uh, uh, reduce uh, uh, the use of fossil fuels, coal and uh, uh, oil and so on and so forth, they are trying to harness the solar energy. And uh, the technology is quite advanced. A colleague of mine in the math department, he has uh, covered the roof of uh, his house. He lives in Torold uh, with um, uh, solar panels. And uh, act the actual investment is considerable, but actually it pays off because any extra power that he uh, uh, produces and doesn't use, he can feed back to the grid and get reimbursed. So this initial investment pays off over a few years. And this can be done here in, in, in Niagara region, right? Can you imagine uh, at uh, lower latitudes, uh, uh, say in California and so on and so forth, um, I, I know many, many people uh, do have the solar panels. And you can see them driving on a highway often, uh, those um, boards that give a warning about traffic situation or whatever, uh, speed, uh, they are all powered by sunlight using the, the solar cells that convert uh, the solar energy into eventually electricity. So that's how, by measuring the brightness of the sun and uh, uh, by knowing its distance from us, 150 million kilometers or one astronomical unit, then we can figure out how much uh, energy it produces every second. That's how we know that its luminosity is uh, four times 10 to the 26 kilowatts. Now, for solving problems, so uh, this is always used in astronomy, but for solving some simple problems that you will be asked to do, and we'll go through a set of examples uh, from uh, 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 last year's test, uh, we, you can always change the units to, to absorb this factor of 4 pi, either in the units of luminosity or distance. So for problem solving, uh, we can rescale the units such that the brightness is simply the luminosity of the source over the distance to the source squared. So you don't have to worry about a factor of 4 pi. Now, note that this is yet another example of inverse square law. We saw this uh, dependence on distance as 1 over distance squared in the case of the Newton's law of gravity, right? Where the force of gravity between two bodies changes with distance as one over distance squared. If you double the distance, the force drops by a factor of four. If you triple it, it drops by a factor of nine. If you halve the distance, it increases by a factor of four. If you reduce the distance by a factor of three, the force increases by a factor of nine, and so on. Well, this is the same thing here, right? If given source, if its distance from us doubles, if I double d, then the brightness is going to drop by a factor of four, right? If distance triples for the same source, same luminosity, the brightness is going to be reduced by a factor of nine. So this is another example of inverse square law. <laughs> 